There's a biography of Elon Musk launching on September 12, 2023 that's written by Walter Isaacson. In the last few days, there's been a bunch of excerpts being posted online, and the latest one was related to Tesla's compact car and robo-taxi platform. We've now learned that Tesla is going to offer two different products on the same platform, one without steering wheel and pedals, and the other one as a $25,000 compact car. We've also learned that these units are first going to roll out from the Texas Gigafactory instead of Mexico, and they will have a cyber truck feel. There's so much more to go through. We have a ton, a ton of new information. And in this video, I'm going to share with you what I've learned and what this means for Tesla and the broader auto market. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we move any further, I really want to thank Walter Isaacson for writing the book and to Axios for posting the excerpt. I'll have links for that piece in the description in the comment section below. And just a heads up, on September 16th at 2 p.m. Central, I'm going to be hosting a space with Walter, the author of the Elon Musk biography, where we'll talk about his book and all the crazy stuff that's sure to be in there. Again, the book will be released on September 12th. Now, let me start sharing with you my takeaways. We'll start with the one platform, two different cars. We now have confirmation that Tesla is indeed going to build a $25,000 around that price compact car. And it's also going to build a version of that car without any steering wheel and pedals. Now, here's a little bit of context from the piece. I want to highlight a couple lines that really give us an idea how the company's thinking about that product. The global market for such a car was huge. By 2030, there might be up to 700 million of them, those compact and robo taxi cars, almost twice as many as for the Model 3 and Y. Then they show that the same vehicle platform and the same assembly lines could be used to make both the $25,000 car and the robo taxi. And here's a little bit of context around that self driving robo taxi model that will be like the compact car, but without a steering wheel and pedals. A central challenge was figuring out how to design a car with no steering wheel or pedals that could meet government safety standards and handle special situations. Week after week, Elon Musk weighed in on every detail. What if someone forgets to shut the door of the robo taxi when they get out, he asked. We have to make sure it can shut its own doors. How would a robo taxi get into a gated community or parking garage? Maybe it needs an arm that can punch a button or take a ticket, he said. At times, the conversations were so earnest and detailed, they bellied how wild the entire concept was. There's been so many rumors on this compact car and this robo taxi platform for God knows how long, and we finally have confirmation. It looks like, I mean, unless Walter has it completely wrong, which I highly, highly doubt, we finally have confirmation that Tesla is indeed planning on making two different cars cars on the same platform. From where I stand, this is a super, super, super smart idea. The first thing is that building a compact car that's going to start around that $25,000 number is super important to de-risk regulatory approval, meaning that if you have a situation where let's say your factories can only build that self-driving model, but then the governments are like, nope, you can't have self-driving yet. We have to approve it. We have to make sure you're doing it right, so on and so forth. Then you're going to have all this idle capacity where you're not going to be able to sell cars and you've wasted all that money in those factories doing nothing. And so putting those factories to work, building something while you wait for that regulatory approval ensures that Tesla's money is actually going to work. It also removes a lot of risk from self-driving not being completed, let's say, in the next 12 to 24 months. As we know, Tesla has been working on this thing forever. And so if this continues to be slow, Tesla would have the ability to push cars to that factory floor while they wait for the completion of the software. And then third, this builds up the supply chain necessary to really produce those robo taxis at scale. Since they're going to be on the same platform and they're going to share a lot of pieces, a lot of processes, a lot of materials, a lot of the engineering, what's going to end up happening is Tesla is going to have the tooling in place, the labor in place, the factories built, the supply chain ramped up so that when everything gets approved and their software is ready, all they have to do is shift the energy from putting in a steering wheel and pedal and instead make a car that can navigate all on its own. It will have that freaking arm that punches the code in the gate, takes the parking ticket. I think this sets Tesla apart from every other manufacturer because by doing this, they'll be able to ramp up to millions of robo taxis per year almost overnight. Now, the other interesting bit of news that we got from that piece is that this compact robo taxi car will have a cyber truck feel. Here's a couple lines from the piece I want to share with you. At a design review session one afternoon in February 2023, Franz von Holzhausen put models of the robo taxi and the $25,000 car next to each other in the studio. Both had a cyber truck futuristic feel. 
Musk loved the designs. When one of these comes around the corner, he said, people will think they are seeing something from the future. Now that could be interpreted in many different ways. And I think we have to ask ourselves, what does feel mean? Now, in case you're not familiar with what the Cybertruck looks like, this is the Cybertruck. So when I think about Cybertruck feel, the way I'm thinking about it is that it's gonna have perhaps not the angular design of the Cybertruck, but it's very much gonna have some sort of stainless steel finish, which implies that there won't be a paint shop. Now, the reason why this is a huge deal is because a paint shop is a huge part of the cost of building a car. It also takes up a ton of room in a factory. So when you think about your traditional cars that are driving around right now, Toyota, Hyundai, even Tesla with the S3, X, and Y, all these cars require a big part of the factory to be appointed specifically for the paint. Plus you have to have the paint itself. You have to pass through a bunch of regulatory approvals to have chemicals in your factory, so on and so forth. So if you go down the route of the Cybertruck and yank that process completely out, then you're reducing a ton of costs when it comes to manufacturing the car and you're removing an entire step from the manufacturing process. Then the other piece is that you're gonna be able to tap into the supply chain for the Cybertruck for let's say stainless steel Steel, which is going to help you lower the cost of that material. In addition, SpaceX is also working on the Starship project, which is their next generation rocket, which is rumored to have the same type of material as a Cybertruck, and in this case, as a compact car. So now all these products are going to basically tap into the same supply chain, which is going to help them drive a ton of volume, which is going to help them lower costs dramatically. And if they're really going down this Cybertruck feel, look, process, whatever you want to call it, this could also mean that the Cybertruck itself has a lot of cost savings in the manufacturing, which they want to leverage for the compact car. And where they're gonna start building these cars as well, the compact car and the robotaxi came as a shock when I read it in the piece. And that's because instead of building it in their Giga Mexico facility, which they announced back in March at their investor day, the first units will be coming out of their Austin, Texas facility. Let me go ahead and read a few lines that point to this. He had always believed that Tesla's design engineers needed to be located right next to the assembly line. Line, rather than allowing manufacturing to be done at a remote location. That way, engineers could get instant feedback on how to design innovations that would both improve the car and make it easier to manufacture. This was particularly true for a completely new car and manufacturing process, but he realized he would have trouble getting his top engineers to relocate to the new factory. Tesla engineering will need to be on the line to make it successful and getting everyone to move to Mexico is never going to happen. So in May, 2023, which is not that long ago, he decided to change the initial build location for the next generation cars and robotaxis to Austin, where his own workspace and that of his top engineers would be right next to the new high-speed ultra automated assembly line. Now this has massive, massive implications. Number one, it should accelerate the timeline of the robotaxi and compact car in relation to Mexico. Right now, Mexico is having a lot of delays getting permits to break ground and start build out of the factory. But if you think about Texas, their Austin factory, they already have that building and they have a ton of line where they can build on with very little regulatory approval. But another thing to take away from this, I believe, is that Tesla's comfortable with the labor costs and the land costs in Texas in relation to Mexico, where they think they can have a compact car that's profitable from the get-go. One of the reasons why Mexico is a common destination for manufacturer is that the cost of labor is pretty cheap, especially compared to the United States and even China. And so if Tesla is deciding to make the compact car here in the United States with the higher labor costs in Texas, this means that the design of the compact car and the robotaxi is likely extremely efficient and cost-effective. Sounds like my dogs agree. <laughs> and in addition, since Tesla has decided to start the ramp up in Texas, that means that Mexico should get started from a point where they take away a lot of the guesswork, where they figure out how to get the line ramped as quickly as possible. And instead, they'll be able to take the lines from Texas, plop them into Mexico, and then get going right away. Very similar to how Shanghai got ramped so quickly with the Model 3 and the Model Y in relation to Tesla's Fremont factory. Even though the Mexican plant might take a little while to get open, once it's open, they should be able to ramp there very quickly because it would have removed all the kinks and all the complexities at Texas. And it goes without saying that this compact car and robotaxi platform will dramatically increase Tesla's ability to produce cars, probably by two to three and potentially four X over the next few years. And one of the biggest takeaways in this compact car robotaxi conversation is that because of that robotaxi platform, 
Elon Musk has openly said that this could be a $10 trillion valuation opportunity for Tesla. Here's a line from the article. A few weeks later, he was still jazzed about the decision. On his plane flying from dropping his son Griffin off at college, he joined the weekly robotaxi meeting by phone. As always, he tried to instill a sense of urgency. This will be a historically mega revolutionary product, he said. It will transform everything. This is the product that makes Tesla a $10 trillion company. People will be talking about this moment in a hundred years. And so it's clear that Elon Musk has a ton of confidence in the product that they're working on. And I'll leave you with one of my videos where I've done the math to see what autonomy could mean for Tesla. And that $10 trillion number is actually not that far fetched. Nothing in that video is financial advice, but I highly encourage you to check it out. If you want to support the channel, all you have to do is click subscribe right below this video. Thank you so much for your support. And if you want to go above and beyond, I have link to my merch, like the shirt I'm wearing right now, and a link to Athletic Greens, which is a supplement I've been taking every single day. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.